So guys, for week five, well, month five, we have, yay, maximum gold for our first set of stuff to open. And so we'll see what we'll get in here and I'll just pause the video and then we'll see about when we get the packs. So here we go, four packs of maximum gold. Are uh, we going to pull good? Probably not. And I'm going to do this one hand again. Yep, yeah, because I suck at life and I couldn't be asked to get my camera stand out, you know, because I'm lazy. And so, yeah, you know, kill me. I want to see some professional dude open packs. No, that's not going to be the case in this channel. Probably never be the case in this channel. Hey, so let's see. Woohoo! So, do this one by one. So, first monarch. Yep, first monarch. Uh, Tucker Tom Bug's not bad. Uh, extra fully powers not bad. Lost World, we're not going to run it. Truck Look Contract, Miscellaneous, we're not going to run. Oh, can still play these. Nice. So, yeah, that's not too bad. Um, so, yeah, I can still play these. Interestingly good card. I uh, don't think we can really run it in Charmers, but, you know, again, it's just a good solid pickup. So, let's go for the next one. So, here we go. Come on. Here you go. Come on, you little sod. Oh, man, you ever feel this is like effort with your hands? Okay, come on. I'm really kind of hoping for maybe like a rank up magic, that would be nice. Or, um, yeah, rank up magic would be really good. Okay, so number 15, gimmick pocket, two level eights. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, okay, fusion we're not going to make. Uh, Graffer. Mm. White Prince, I forgot this was in here. Yeah. Oh, Link Rebo. Oh, so we get an upgrade. That's kind of nice. Oh, and a Nibiru. God, that's really good. And a Harpy's Feather Dust. Wow, we're getting some good stuff for the deck. Wow, this is actually my first ever Nibiru. So, uh, yeah, that's really cool. I haven't actually ever actually pulled one before. So, yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah, I, I'm really happy with that pack. That's good. Um, just because it's like, it's never really a card I've even actually, like... Um, I don't think Nibiru is a bad card, it's just like the decks I play and I'm never really good in life matches at remembering counts for like five summons, so uh, it's one of those I just kind of like don't run it for that reason because I'm never good at like going, oh yeah, sugar, I need to actually do stuff. Oh, okay, so, right, so we have a Dark Angel, nice card. Oh, C101. So we can use this because we have um, number... Um, 101. So if we can get like a rank up card, we can actually use this. That's really good. Uh, Barry Statue of sort of things. That's not too bad. Wolfbark. Wow. Okay. Uh, Command Witch. Oh, we do have the secret freaking Imperm. Wow. Sweet. We actually got an Imperm. And Nibiru. So two Nibiru and an Imperm. Oh, wow. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, gosh. That's actually a really good set for us. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh man, this is crazy. Oh jeez, I haven't pulled this good in ages, so I mean like my original pulls from this were kind of really different, so Okay, so we've got some good. okay. So Drowning Mirror Force, actually had another good card for us, so we need some kind of protection. Foolish Peril, god jeez, we're getting some of the good stuff now. Uh Blade Master. God I remember this was a secret rare. Machine tube, wow. Uh we can't really do that. I'm sorry, I'm just like really still kind of like an awe about pulling like really good, so uh, Silent Angler, uh, wow, Troll and Lock, and Parlor Trigger Maid, wow. So, you, oh wow, jeez, we've got some really, really good stuff. I'm, I'm really happy with this. I mean, I know this is only like, what, literally like a part, half of our opening this this time, but wow, jeez, God, I'm so happy. So yeah, we'll open the next set and then we'll see what we get. Hey guys, so, so this is what we got this week. So, well, this is still the same episode, but we got one. We got two ghosts from the past. Yeah, we're kind of like having a bit of like an extra month because of uh, like how everything is. So I do apologize. That this episode is going to be a lot more later out than I really would like, but due to family circumstances and everything, and plus we also got a whole stop from it that we're not going to play. But hey ho, that's that. So we'll get into these boxes. I'll pull the packs out, and then we'll see what we get. Right, guys, so we've got our packs here. So we shall go for them in whatever. I will go with. Uh, this one, go firewall. God, I'm so bad at getting these packs open with one hand, it's not good. God, you guys seem to. Where is it? Oh, jeez. I'm gonna, 
Ooh, okay, we've got a little bit of movement here. Movement's good. Yeah, let's get it down my fingers. Down my fingers. Right. Let's see what we got. So, what we got? First card, we got Gear Town. Ooh, it's good. Uh, Buster, we're not really going to play this. Uh, time free for maybe we can make use of it. I doubt it, but we can try. Oh, uh, Alphos, nice, decent card. And a level, level, level archer. Not bad for the first pack. So, guys, these guys do jump cuts. I'm really trying here. It's just really hard to do this one time. Um, basically, my son's gone to sleep, so I'm just doing this quickly, so I couldn't really do a setup. So, I do apologize. So, ooh, we've got, a, we've got a Durandal. Durandal's good. I like Durandal. Alright, so, I haven't got a ghost, so that's fine. I don't care. Uh, Durandal, yeah, must change. Ooh, God. Okay, uh, side view from Winder. Matoshe. Actually, <laughs> I think we can use, which is bad, but hey, at least they're all like blue giraffe, which is kind of cool. So let's see what we get here. You know, I wouldn't mind a ghost rare, but I don't really think I'm going to get one, so it's fine. So, Tackle Crusader, okay. Not bad. Uh, time for you, Regulator. Sea Twins. Malface Fusion. And a whole. Hulk Shadow Hulu. That's not too bad, so that's, that's like one of the cards I wouldn't have minded having, so we'll see what else I can get. And what here we're looking for is the fairy tale stuff, so ideally, but hey ho. So well, let's see, so Metal Phase Fusion again. Another Drando, wow, getting these mass change again, wow. Time free finder. And a Neshadol Genius, so that's not too bad. It's actually, I got all of the, the uh, Shadol monsters I wanted, so at least that's nice. I don't have to open any more packs for those. <laughs> and it wanted one of each, so at least that's kind of like nice. That I kind of like got everything I wanted out of one set, in that regard. Right, come on, Dark Magician Poop. Right, so we've got Metal Phase Fusion, not bad. Cosmojo! Shunsun Vine Maiden. Ooh, fairy tales. So, actually, got something I wanted. Yay. Raid Reptilinius. So, last pack. Last chance to get me a fairy tale thing. Ah, uh, man. i get the ones I want. Oh, well. I suppose what if I do get at least. Um, was it at least? Then doesn't the light fairy tale come out in the next set or something? So I suppose I could do like a mass terror variant, maybe? I don't know. Right, so let's go. Uh, my Dolce. Resonator. Molten Conduction Field. XYZ Requiem. And another one. So we didn't really get anything we could really use, which is kind of sad. So we. I'm just looking at this game. Okay, I got one card I needed out of like one fringy pack, so this ain't too bad, so we'll kind of still make some good use out of it. So I'll go into like a deck build. Maybe I might get another pack of these, we'll see, but here yeah, we go. But so hopefully it turns out alright. Alright, so here we go. This is our lovely first game of the uh, episode, so. Um, I don't know this at the time, uh, so it's just, I, I just called it fairies because pretty much that's what I can consider it is, so. Unfortunately. Washing machines on in my house, so I do apologize. So, yeah, <laughs> vanity's ruler is, is a thing. So, I was lucky I just literally had you know the out with the uh Rigeki, which is good, but it doesn't matter. So, it does that, get that, and I'm like, okay, so hit for 24. I'm gonna like smile now. <laughs> so, I don't think he was too happy when he kind of like saw this. So, so. Yeah, I thought, what is it, best thing to do was just do that. Then I could just hit for like mega mega attack and then that's it, I'm done. So that's the uh, first game. And here we're going to game two. So, game two is a bit of a different color fish. I don't really draw anything really good, so I'm a bit like, okay, what do I kind of do here? So, Star Trek Blast is going to come down, he's going to get the ruler. So, I do that. I try the Rigeki, which is the only player I can do. Attack for 15. That's good. I'm figuring, okay, it's not too bad. There's no point in me shunting anything down. I can't really do anything. 
and yeah the park comes down he's going to get rid of stuff yeah photon sanctuary then he does the smart move which i figure was the good one which was just go for christia and i'm just like yeah okay i really need something good to kind of like get this Chris is going to be a pain in the backside. The only really thing is good is that I know it goes to the top of the deck, but I can't do anything. So, I'm just like, okay, 28, let's go for it. Let's see, you know, I'm just kind of hoping I draw something good. So, and then I'm just like, I drew a judgment. I'm just like, I could possibly do something, but he's really got to, you know, let me, the, you know, the, it, it's just really bad when you, you draw the card you don't really want to draw, and it's like Pangratops, just not what I want to see, so I'll just end it. Right, so we're finally into the uh, last game, so I pretty much open up, I'm good, happy I get a draw, so I just do that, sit on my back row, and end. So, I was like, okay, he's going for Desires, this is good. Mine is annoying. But there's nothing much I can do. I just figure I'm going to have to just play pure, pure bait out. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So it's a really interesting part now because because mine's on the field. It just really restricts me doing anything. So I'm just figuring out, okay, what are my plays here? I need to kind of like wait till I draw something and then I can kind of like pop the mine. So I figure that's like my best plan. <laughs> but it's just so bad, it's like we're just in there going, okay, who's going next? Who's going next? I didn't even know he drew all three mines, that's just crazy. I mean, that, I don't know why he saw him there, I figured that was just like a really dumb thing to do. <laughs> I love that, just like the bottom just comes in, just like, no. Now there's actually my spirits. I set that face down, which I don't know why I did, but then I realised that I couldn't have actually added another field spell. Any, uh, sorry, another uh, set another spell from my deck because I had too many sets already. But that was funny, just knowing that I've just got a 2400 and he just literally couldn't do anything. So that's it, we take game one. Oh, good boy. Okay, so if any of you know what this deck is, you should be happy. But yeah, it's the uh, $5 deck challenge trial, which was featured on mcall 40s channel. So this was kind of funny that... It was a seal challenge versus an extreme budget challenge. So, well, I figured the decks were more than $5 because of the kaijus in there, but still, it's a relatively budget deck. So, budget deck versus budget deck. I kind of laugh because, um, obviously, with that, uh, my deck was kind of given a bit more of a power boost because of my uh, charming one. But, yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> I was like, as soon as the anima came out, I was like, Ugh. but I had to use the ogre, so it was good. I was safe it free. It's not too bad. And then we get to the draw, so I'm just figuring to myself, I think, I always thought to myself, any time Luna comes out, is you're going, especially with your charmer spell, you just get two cards. It's just a smart choice, why aren't you doing it? Um, I go into Pentastag because I know I'm going to do piercing. I just figured that's the best one. I cleared more of the board with that, and I can set up for a play later on. And I've also got my spell, so I can literally just pump out and get destruction, which for me works. Again, you know, different styles for different people. I just feel like with that, because it targeted, I should just stop it from working. It doesn't mean it's going to work, but that's what I kind of felt at the time. Uh, this is the point in the game where the gentleman in question I was playing against was saying that the uh, fairy tale tales had not been released yet in the TCG, which I don't know why. When I said it was in Ghost of the Past, and you could said it was a lie, but hey ho. <laughs> So here we go again, and he is playing the deck again. I don't, I never actually saw his hand, so it's interesting to note that he had, like, the Karibos in there. I didn't really think he had that, so that's an interesting premise. I didn't really see that. So the appliances are there. I figured just that the best thing to do is just, like, pop the one, because that way he just doesn't have any link material. So I, figured, I thought it might fizzle, but I didn't know, so I just figured I'd just go with that. At least as the fairy tale tells out, I'm not going to really take any damage. So that was the idea. But I thought, get that, get the Baylor out, make the link to nothing. 
So I kind of with this, I waited until he got to the the link free virus because I know that way he can't resurrect it. So I figured he probably like most people only ever have runs a handful of the virus engine. So where the, that deck suffers is that kind of engine suffers is if you solemn the uh, link free, it's just a dead engine. So it's just kind of funny in this one. I'm just beating him down <laughs> with a kaiju. Um, I think this is where it literally starts to go wrong for me. So yeah, he does that, and they just go there and I die, <laughs> which is just really sucky. But he placed obviously the kaiju on my zone purposely. So oh well, nothing I could do. So in this game, we're versus invoke Shadal. So let's see how this goes. Um, from what I remember with this one, I think the gentleman like uh, like quits part way through. If I, if I remember correctly, don't quote me on this. So, Foolish goes to Squamata, Squamata, yeah, get Wendy, gets Hedgehog, go, you know, good line of play, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't know, it's like, I would have personally, I don't know, it's like, L seemed like the better thing, really, but, because he could have just done something, but, oh well. He gets rid of my stuff, which kind of sucks. He uses that. I use unpossessed because I just figured that I'm just I need to give him a target to negate. I figure it's the best one. I don't know why he didn't. Oh wait, no, it was on my turn. So he does that. He's got window. I see. I always love some of these, and I'm just thinking to myself that with the anaconda, I'm just saving <laughs> the the veil. Uh, just like, I just see the anaconda and I was like, but yeah, I'm going to bail the living crack out of you. It just sucks for him, though, that basically Winder just can't clear a 2450. So it would have been better for him to actually have like hit my 2450 and like hit me with that, but it's one of them. I just feel kind of a little bit sorry for this guy. I'm just not like beating the living daylights out of him, but he's playing the better deck and I've just got the better grind game. I don't think it helps with that. I just actually had the, the clutch Vader at that point in time. I actually do that. He ashes. Unfortunately, field spell says no. I do love that, that people don't read how the field spell works at times. That field spell is dumb when it actually works properly. And then um, after that, the uh, quit the match as he felt that field spell was unfair and when he messaged me privately. It doesn't matter, you know, it is as it is, does. So we played f three games so far. So three full, you know, one quake match, two full matches. This is where we're at the halfway point where it starts to go really, really badly wrong. So I will um, comment why. <laughs> If it's not obvious by what's in his hand. So he actually two Malant for a Grow Valley. Was it thrown a Necro Valley? So he's gonna do that, discard, get the Necro Valley, set the spite. And I'm just like Yeah, the Necro Valley's out and we've got the Dragoon. That's just not good, that's just not what I wanna see. I'm just thinking to myself, if I haven't got anything to protect my monster, the Dragoon's just gonna pop it anyway, so I don't feel there's a point. I play the Vela. Unfortunately, core buy is useless because of um, of Necro Valley, so that's kind of sucks. Uh, the Galaxy Cyclone again is just something I just didn't want to see, so he's just going to do that. And I think that's just below lethal, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's just below lethal. I was like, I was like half expecting Gaga -ga Cowboy to come out to like, you know, really just rub it in. And then I just look at myself going, I've got the field spell, but yeah, I, I actually monster reborn to see if he'll negate it with Dragoon, but you know, he's a smart player, there's no way he's going to do that. So I've got that, that's the replay end, there's nothing I can do. Right, so this is game two, I have a better hand, or I feel is a better hand, I make him go first because I feel like that's the right play to make because I've got the ne and then he goes into the fusion which can't be destroyed by card effects which really, really fucks me over. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Get my Luna, bounce, he sends. I said to he cyclones. Just not the card I want him to get. The core buy is fine, actually. Uh, so it's not too bad. He gets the command and I do that again. So this is just like, there you go, that's two. He can't do it the third time. I strike him. 
at least it negates the effect, but you can't destroy me, which kind of sucks. So I'm like, okay. Avail it. It's just so bad because there's you're trying to grind really hard, and then I think he does what I think it is, goes into the verse eight, and then I'm like, should have saved the Veiler for that. <laughs> That's the thing that hit me hard. I was like, I should have saved the Veiler for the verse eight. I did forgot he had the verse eight. <laughs> And there we go. And then it's like 4,000. And like, if he draws a monster, I'm screwed. If he a monster, that's it, I'm done. So yeah, just won that game. So, game, this one was against Sky Striker. And I didn't realize, I didn't know because I won't go, because I went first. So I figure I've got a, you know, one Ash, one Baylor. Got a 2100. I feel I'm in a good place. And then I see Ray, and I'm like, well, this ain't going to go well. And then he just reminds me, and I'm like, uh, this ain't a good place. So I feel just saying that's like the good call at this point. It's really sucky because you, sometimes you don't expect a certain deck to turn up. Striker is just one of those that, because I feel like, and it's an honest point of the meta kind of changing, you kind of look at it, that it's more of a trap-heavy environment at this point in time, not a spell-heavy environment. Or if so, I, as much as I like Village of the Spellcasters, I always seem to misplay with it. And so that's... Mm, I was really, really happy with that core, though, with the uh, Imperm. So it feels so weird to run it. And then like solemn the triple tactic, so he's not going to get anything. Uh, he, he messaged me about this. Was like, I'm really not happy that you did that. And then I, Vale is Kagari. Uh, then it was the. I don't understand. It was really bad. And then I Ash here. I, I was look at this. I was like, okay, how the fuck did I lose? And face the mind goes, and I'm just. I think I'm so angry at the fact that I lost against this now. And then I didn't realise he had the imperm. Oh, uh, it's just annoying. So I feel like doing the Shizuku and go for the Pentastag was right to get that so I could get the other one and then just attack. That I felt that was the right call, you know. If he gets the uh, token, goes into Kagari. I really, really wish I just, I don't know. I look at this and I'm trying. But he got the afterburners, which kind of sucks. Ray comes back. And then it goes into Halky Firebrax. I'm like, okay, this ain't going to go well. Goes for that. Gets that back. And then it's the access. And access just means death for me straight away. So that's it. That's game. <laughs> so, Striker Game 2. I feel like the best way for me was to make him go literally first so I could get that extra card advantage so I thought for the field spell up I can stop his creature effects that was the idea so I was like okay this could be good I'll do that and then he widow anchors me I'm like mm, did not need you so kind of sucks there, get the ray. At least we hit the ray, so I'm happy with that. But then the ray tags out, and then it stops that from attacking, which kind of sucks again. So, really good thing about the deck is at the moment is that field spell is really, really doing me favors. But he's doing really well. He's playing around it a lot. I mean, honestly, the guy really is playing around all my stuff, so the guy has honestly played Strikers for quite a while, so, you know, credit where credit's due, he's really doing well. And I was just like, R I think I remember him drawing the rotor, and I was just like, this is just not what I want to see. So he's, he's, all, he's always basing out my stuff. Which just really, really sucks. He's just always got like got the bait, got the bait, got the bait, and it's like <sighs> he's just no matter what I have, he just seems to be one step ahead.
go for the Kagari again. I'm just like, and he gets the winner and get, goes into that. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, okay, I need this so I can just get this out. It's like, at least I can draw. I was looking, going, okay, I just need to draw, I just need to get cards. <laughs> so, all I'm thinking is, I need to get cards. Then, here we go. And then here comes the access. Just absolute pain in the backside. I'm just like, ah, access code. And then I forget that because access code doesn't start a chain and I can't use, it doesn't prompt me to use my field spell on the standby phase. I'm just like, ah. And I think to myself, I just should have set the yoga set that because then he has to pop my back row to then do two free and I was like okay uh pen back side but then I worked out I had more links in his grave so he would have won anyway. So it's just I have to think he's running the better deck. He's got triple tactics. I've done well so you know that's not bad for me. I just think he's you know he's got all the good stuff. I think he messaged me saying that he side deck droplets as well so I really would have struggled so there's not much I could really have done. In another way, it's just a it's just a power class. He's got the better cards, so oh well, oh well. Last game, and this one's kind of one of the reasons why I've been having a bad time this week. And this time we're playing Unchained, and someone playing uh, Supply Squad, which I I think Distant Coda will probably have something to say about in that. But hey ho, and Lava Golem in the main deck, two very interesting tech picks. So I don't feel like I did really did bad here. I think I did a couple of misplays, so... I mean, bear in mind, I don't play many Unchained matchups, so I'm not always sure about what to do. But he just seems to... He he knows what he's doing with this build. He's really... Um, it's tacked out, but he's really got a good handle on it because I'm there going, I don't know exactly what to do. Because I know he can try and synchro on my turn, and I'm just trying to prevent him from doing that at all costs. That's like my plan, just to go, right, you can't synchro with my crap. <laughs> but he just keeps generating these beat sticks, and I'm like, I really am struggling to go, okay. I I can't deal with some of this stuff, it's really, really bad. So, and you think to yourself, okay, oh, this is where I, f okay, I did actually get rid of the supply squad. I am actually a decent human being for that. And then he tarantulas me, and then I don't realize that things can come back, which is kind of sucky for me. Uh, I did not see full force as well coming, which was really bad. This to me was a good play that I did, that at least, you know, I generated some advantage. Lilith was not something I wanted to see. Fairy Tetales was good. At least I had like a 24 and I got over it, so that was good. And then, yeah, Activate Prison. I'm like... Oh, this is one of the wrong things about Unchained. If they float, when the deck goes off and it floats, it really floats bad. And that was it. I just couldn't do anything because he just linked my shite off. So that was it. And here we go. Last one of the matches. So, yeah, as you can see, we have not drew very well at all. I don't think he's drawn incredibly well, but... I kind of look at it now, I really wish I could have done something a bit different. The Ash was the, the the good set, but then it's like he has Dark Hole, which at least then I flip up my trap, so at least I get some utility out of this. But he Ashes, and I'm like, Ugh. he seems to have Z out. Then he activates the Unchained, and it's like, okay, so just instant recovery. So I'm just going to take 30 to the face, which again is not good. He pops, and it's like, okay, this is still a battle phase. I'm going to get hit for quite a bit of damage. So I've got Heater, I think. And I'm like, okay, Heater's the best call. Hit, you know, hit the level three. Okay, he's going to get that. 
So, full force was I did not see coming. At least I got something. So, that was the only bad part, at least. But with him just getting those 3k beaters out constantly, I just, I'm there going, this is just getting bad. I can't do anything with 3k beaters, just keep coming out of nowhere. So, I summon that just because I want to stop him from linking with my crap away again. And then he just keeps getting beat sticks, and I'm just like, this is nothing I can do. So, there we go. That's it. He he just completely overpowered me. Um, you know, there's no excuse for it. I don't think I could have played it any differently. I don't think um, my hands were the issue or the play is I could have played were any different by like looking over the footage is again it's a question of the the cards they have are generally better and it, it is one of those things about being a sealed only challenge that sometimes you do feel a little bit demoralized because you only have a limited card pool but at the end of the day you should be happy about the achievements you make with this and I do I do feel that that I want to say that if you are doing a sealed challenge don't feel demoralized that you, you know you may lose some matches like dragoon just seems to if you're playing sealed only dragoon is like your worst nemesis it just appears and it's near enough impossible for you to get rid of even people who run you know fully built decks unless it's something like that can obviously abuse super poly really struggle to deal with dragoon and you know and it's on the ocg ban list i feel for a very good reason it's too generic and it's too easy to sum up with uh, Verte. So that that's a personal opinion. You know, you can tell that from what you will. Um, I'm a I played Dark Magician before, but I, I personally don't like Dragoon. It, it again, that's personal, but you know, take from that what you will. So we'll run it and do a deck profile. So I'm going to leave this running. I don't normally do this, but this is not lack of editing. I just feel like it's easier. So so that's my other deck. So we will go down to. So, well, I'll show you from month five. So, month five, this was our deck build. Not much has really changed over the things, and through month six. So, month six, we really limited... Ah, uh, get the horrible thing. We limited our uh, mage stuff. I didn't feel like it was working. Uh, it just, just, to me, didn't feel good. So, I was running three cards... I just didn't feel like it was anything. Endymion is fine. I like it. It does what it does. And it can take from the extra deck. So I can, can make the Synchro, so it doesn't matter. So I can equip it as well as the Fusion, so that's fine. I can use it to fin my deck again, which we're doing a lot back row, so I feel that's fine again. Um, pulling the Nibiru's were, was an amazing thing. So I thought, play one in the main deck, see how it goes. Again, Pancratops. If not, I can use it as discard fodder. You know, the two uh, heaters are fine. One of the others are all good. Luna's really nice. Again, just your Stratos, but with the bounce. One Jigger, because it just I like it. I feel it's good, because it floats. One Ferris, because it goes into this guy, which gets you pluses, so it's good again. One Magius, it just does its job. It's got decent stats as well. One Ash, because we need hand traps. One ogre again because we need hand traps. <laughs> Free effect there, always good. One regeki, always good. One mind control, happy with that. One mirror force, one call by the grave, staples, don't know why. Free spirit charmers, you just need this. It's a good one. The only problem is, is discard, so it is vulnerable to ash, and it is a hard neg too if they hit the ash. So it's why I like the field spell because the field spell counters the ash. And you also have the strike to deal with that. So that's the, another, again, another personal preference. Spirit. So Awakening of the Possessed. Everyone has their own weird theory of, like, some people like one. I personally still like three. Because even if you have one monster and you have three of those, you still get one card plus advantage. So even if you, say, you have three of those and one monster, you summon that, you draw one. Okay, it's not, could be good, it could be bad. But you've got an insane beat stick of a monster for it, which is level 4, so... It has its reasons to be there. More fairy tale tales. Fairy tale tales! You don't use the reveal much because of, you know, the unlimited monster pool, but... 
taking you no know, battle damage for the first time each time you would take effect or thingy damage is good, especially against burn, so I like that. Field spell, again, good. <laughs> so if you lo use Luna, you can add Luna to add the Earth Charmer. Earth Charmer, use this, get Nefarious, and then you can kind of like just, just do some good plays. It's really good. In Perm, we had to put it in. <laughs> Uh, possessed partnerships, two of is fine, I feel. Uh, unpossessed is good at one. Uh, strikes good, free judgment. I haven't had a complaint about this. This has actually done, uh, some games it's done bad, I feel like, but most of the times it's, I feel it's right, so I'm not gonna complain so far. One magic diffusion, I like, cause again, it gives you a thousand attack onto my other one. Trish is good. Drag out is good. The match fusion if when it equips is good and again it's um, board wipe is good. Moonlight's good again, I like it. Uh Tornado Dragon Winnie back row removal. Boost is just good for blocking off. Sat on our arc, we haven't got a decent replacement yet, but I feel it's good for what it does. Harland Draco. And I don't know, it it's still I'm up in the air about it, but it has done me some good work and it has attacked the game a few times, so I don't feel like getting rid of it just yet. Dweller is good. Topical logic. Now, I don't know if I said this the last time, but I've run it because when you go from Fence Tag into uh, my talker, you need to then, you can only summon Cyber, so there's nothing to kind of do with anything else, and I didn't have any other link for it, so I think this just kind of like took the slot because it was just something to go into. And if you kind of activate your Possessed Trap, you can summon something to a spell it, uh, zone it points to. Nuke your opponent's board, and then your uh, possessed spell will stop your child from being destroyed. So it, it works out well, and then it's you know utopical logic, it's like three thousand six hundred. So good card. Transcode, you, it's good. <laughs> one phoenix, one pen stack. Uh, Crossroads, just because it's a nice card and it works well with my rose dragon. And uh, side deck, another Nibiru, Kaiju, Santa Claus. So we have a lot of disruption now. Uh, one Crowley. One Bell, one Droll and Lock, one Cyclone, one Duster, one Fusion. I feel like one Fusion is right now. I reckon the Fusion and the Cr Crowley will probably end up being scrapped depending on what we get. Uh, two Dark Roller, one Bottomless, one Drowning, and then two D Barrier. Because, I don't know, I feel D Barrier is still good. It still works, so I don't feel any need to replace it. Dark Ruler and D Barrier are very good for kind of clearing boards or stopping play, so I like those for that. And D Barriers, even though I'm a shadow player, it's like D Barriers come in really handy for like going, okay, activate standby phase. <laughs> yeah, Chenning gets lovely. There you go, that's the deck. Um, hopefully, you guys like it. Thank you very much for watching the video. It is all the views are always appreciated. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Um, sorry for the long wait on this one, it's just uh, in the middle of changing jobs and sorting stuff out for my house and we've recently adopted a kitten into the house and we have named him Alucard because uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Castlevania series and I do love stuff like that so yeah thank you guys very much and I shall see you guys in the next video